Hey guys, and it's Ben, and welcome back to episode 6 of your uh, Bucket mini game tutorials. And today, all we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of um, fixing, or, yeah, fixing our our, our countdown uh, class, because, you know, we've had some people have been, you know, suggesting better ways of doing it, so we're going to be doing that today. And it's not going to be the longest tutorials, and what we're going to do is we're going to change this from extending runnable, uh, implementing runnable, to extending... So it extends a uh, bucket runnable, which is a, a different kind of thing completely. So now if we go into our uh, main class, you see where it says new thread, you know, start this. We, we can still start this because bucket runnable is a uh, is an instance of, of runnable. But we, we don't want to do this. Instead, what we want to do is I'm going to make a method called public void start countdown. Or actually, no, we're going to do that in our start countdown method. No, we're not. We're going to do it in here. Start countdown. And in here, what we're going to say is going to say get server dot get scheduler. So we're getting our bucket scheduler for the server. And we're going to uh, schedule sync repeating task. And it's going to use this plugin. And the runnable class is going to use is it's going to use the start countdown. So new start countdown with nothing in it and it's going to run every second uh, so and we want a second delay uh, just so it doesn't start up as soon as the server starts we want to wait a second uh, before it starts counting down so that's all we need to do for that and instead of this line of code here we can just type start countdown like so like that and so now in our start countdown we're going to need to change a few things so instead of saying whilst true we can actually just completely get rid of that statement and every time that we use thread.sleep that can be removed because what our bucket runnable does is it makes whatever is inside of this run every second so if we're sleeping for a second inside of our run method then it's gonna you know bug out so what it's gonna do is it's going to run and every time it runs it's gonna change the time until start to 60 so instead of that, we're going to remove this, and we're going to make this uh, in this variable public. And in our start countdown method, we're going to say start countdown dot time until start equals sixty, like so. So now every time that it's called, it's going to start in sixty seconds. So it's going to run. It's going to say, "Is the game state in lobby?" And can the, if the game can start, and this doesn't, this wouldn't work anyway. If the game can start, then uh, we're going to do the countdown timer. So what we actually kind of want to do here is we're going to want to change this around uh, quite a bit, and we're just going to want to make it run every time. So remove this if game can start part, and remove the broadcast message. Uh, so, and then remove this for loop as well. So, and remove the brakes. Right. So what we're going to do is, when it's run, every second this is going to run. And if the game state is in the game state of lobby, then we're going to remove this if statement, because that if statement is just pointless. So, if the game cannot start, we don't want to broadcast anything, but we, we don't want to do this. Uh, we don't want to continue with this you know method so if the game cannot start then we want to just return we, we don't want to carry on uh, actually uh, that we don't want either we don't want that so if the time until start is equal to zero then we're going to start the game however now because of the new way we're doing it the time until start never goes down when it's at 60 so at the end of our run method we want to say time until until start equals um, equals 60, no, e <laughs> negative equals 1, I'm not, I'm not thinking today, I just got home, so we're going to remove 1 from time until start, until equals 0, and then we're going to start the game, and we're going to cancel the task, which we're going to get into next, so in the VC Warfare, we're going to make a public, a public static integer, which is going to be start countdown id, um, and currently it equals just nothing or just don't even set it equal to anything and when we start the countdown we're going to say start countdown id 
is equal to this task, and that gives us the ID for the countdown. So then, when we start the game, we are going to stop the countdown. So we're going to make another method in here, which is public void stop countdown. And in here, we're going to say get server dot get scheduler dot cancel task uh, with the ID of start countdown ID, like so. So once the game has started, we have no need for the countdown. So the BC Warfare dot stop oh, countdown. We need to make it static, obviously, which we haven't done. So public static void, uh, and then instead of get server, we're going to type bucket dot get scheduler, like so. And I guess we should also keep it consistent by doing the same to the other one instead of get server. Uh, but we can't because we're starting it, so we'll just keep that as, and we're not using it, you know, differently anyway. So that's how we're going to do that. Now, however, time until stake was zero. What if there aren't enough, you know, people? To, to join. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if can start uh, which like that uh, if game dot can start so if the game can start and then we want to invert that so if the game cannot start then there's no point actually you know starting the game so if the countdown timer gets to zero and the game cannot start, we're going to just say, bah, this, bah, it didn't work. <laughs> so we're going to make another method, uh, which is going to be a public static uh, void, and it's going to be restart countdown, like so. And in this, we're going to stop the countdown, and then we're going to start countdown. Start countdown, like so, but we can't stop the countdown because it's not static. So, um, the way we're going to get around this is we're going to in here in our start countdown we're going to make a constructor and we're going to say well the BC warfare first and then plugin and then we're going to say public start countdown like so. Like so, and in here we're going to have the BC Warfare PL, and then in here plugin equals PL. Okay, so now what we're going to do is instead of saying stop countdown, we're going to say plugin dot stop countdown, and we're going to change stop countdown to be a normal method, and we're going to get server dot get scheduler, and in our start countdown here in the constructor, it's going to take this class as its parameter and here now we can just uh, say remove the static and top countdown start countdown will work fine and then when we're in here and we want to restart the countdown so we can say plugin dot restart countdown like so uh, if if the game can't start so remove that so if the time until start equals zero so if it's time to start the game but the game can't start so if game cannot start with the exclamation mark at the front we want to restart the countdown and return out of this because we don't want the game to start we don't want to reach that point uh, because the time until start is equal to zero but the game you know it can't start so we're going to restart the countdown and we're going to broadcast so chat utilities dot broadcast uh, chat color oh, there's no more chat color so uh, cannot start game restarting countdown like so. So that's how that's going to work. And now I think about it, we should change time until start just to string dot value of and then put time until start in that. So it's it's more better practice to do that. Um so yeah, that will restart the countdown and then it will do all that. But if the game can start, it's just gonna go straight to the starting of the game and it's going to start the game. So I hope that's cleared a few things up. Uh, thanks for watching this episode make sure to tune to the next episode in three days and yeah I'll see you next time